Hey, what's up guys? Audio Engineer for Noah here. And I thought um, I'd do a video for all the audio engineers out there who want to learn, get better, um, and I'll walk through how I mixed Noah's latest on Better Things. And he's a great artist. I'll put the link in the bio for you guys. And um, so when I got this track, obviously the first step was organizing. Not too many tracks on this one. Um, but organize it, obviously... It's preference, but I'd recommend doing drums, vocals, and any synths together, bass. Um, when I got this track, there wasn't too many flaws with it, just basic um, mixing necessities that had to be done. So I'll show you guys what those are and how to make decisions when you are sent a song. So first, I'll give it a run through of just the basic parts. I won't play it all the way through, just each part on its own. Right. Turn me up. Right. Top down the back. Six or three on the track. Small town the map. Maybe girl she play me. Text her back like maybe. Go and go says lately. I put them out like daily. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used to tell you things. I used to tell you that. Nice way that I write that. I used to tell you things. Alright, so that's the basic run through the song. Great song. So when I got it. First thing I did, alright, all right, I need to work on the drums. That's what I do every time. I go straight to the drums and get grinding on that. Also in the intro, I had all the lows be brought from the bottom. Alright, so the drums. So how I made my decisions, I usually first take care of the kick because the kick, if it's not popping, I'm just not interested in the song. It's as, as simple as it gets. If there's just a crappy kick, I'm not, I can't listen to it. So when I got it, it was already pretty good. So I just, I just boost, boosted the 96 hertz range just to get the thump. Add a little compression. And the snare, I really like it to have that crack. So that's where the boost of that was. And then this part, I really didn't like the sound that was going on there. So I'll just show you guys what was going on. I didn't like that brightness on there. So I just cut that, but raised the five because I really liked what was going on there. And that kind of disguised the cut at six, which when you cut something, you should always raise whatever's next to it. Kind of like that right there. Just get that pinch. So then that disguises the cut with the good sound that you want to be prominent. The hats are usually simple. Um, these came in fine, so I just cut the low so it didn't conflict with the snare. I'll show you. So all right, it's in its own lane, no problem. Then um, drums, what a lot of people forget to do, or at least people don't believe in, but I believe in I believe in compressing drums heavily, um, the whole bus. So what I did was, it kind of like what compressing the bus does on drums, if you don't already do it, I'd recommend you start doing it, is it gives it a breath to the tempo. It gives the hat more hats more rhythm and the kick more pop. So I'll show you without it and then I'll put it on. So that's without it, with it. Very subtle, but I promise you that if you listen critically, it's a huge difference. It gives the song breath. It gives it, it gives the song life and kind of more rhythm to it, which is everything when it comes to a rap song. You want rhythm. And then I just cut the mids out a little bit, um, bumped up where the kick was, and called it a day on the drums. 
If any of you are confused on how compressor works, um, just leave a comment and I'll, actually, I'll do a whole video on compressor. It took me a while to really understand compressors. Um, it can really make or break your song completely. Alright, so on to the vocals. I really didn't have to do much on his vocals in this song. They came in pretty good. So... Up down the back, six or three on the track, yeah. small t So, I had the vocals come in, stay at where they were. Because usually when I get a song, I'll bring everything down six decibels and work from there. Because it's easier to bring things up to make them prominent than to actually make them louder. And it's, it turns out to be better quality. Because in the mix, volume does not matter. I can't express that enough. I don't. It doesn't matter how loud your song is in the mix. That's what mastering is for. In mixing... All you want is to have it as clean as possible and everything in its own lane to sound as best as possible. You want every frequency to be its best. Right. Huh. Top down the back. Uh, six with so with the main vocals, all I did was throw a little bit of compressor on there. You should really always be pretty light with your com light with the ratio on vocals because you don't want pumping on the vocals. You just want the less spoken words to be heard the less loud words because naturally you know as a rapper you can probably hear me right now i'm bumping my head to the beat and just there you can hear a difference in the volume and what compressor will do is it'll get rid of that it'll bring the lower lower volume in the vocals to same as the higher and um you gotta be care very careful with it this can break the vocals but it can also make the vocals because you can hear those words you wouldn't be able to hear before so here's without the compressor Right, top down the back, six or three on the track, small town the map, made beats from the trap. With it. Right, top down the back, six or three on the track, small town the map, made beats from the trap. Very subtle, but if I were to play the whole song, you would hear parts where you wouldn't quite be able to hear every single word. But with the compressor, those lower, lower level vocals are brought up. And then on the EQ, I just dropped a little bit right here. I didn't like the sound. I'll boost it up for you guys to hear. Right. Top down the back. Kind of not a, just a harmful sound. So when you guys get vocals or any sound per se, and it just doesn't sound right, like it could sound a little better, what you want to do is you want to get the bandwidth nice and small, sweep it. Right. Top down the back. As it's playing, and then look for those bad vocals, and then cut it. Right. Top down the back. Six or three on the track, small t And that's how you identify those bad sounds and cut them out. And you should really not cut out too much because there are positive frequency parts in every sound and every frequency. So you got to be careful of what you're cutting and what you aren't. Right. Top down the back. On the ad-libs, I did the most of the ad-libs, honestly, because they came in the same as the vocals and it kind of conflicted. So. Right. Right. Huh. Top down the back. Top. So I added distortion to kind of get that microphone -y, um or the kind of more just back in the song. I'll play without it. Huh. With it. Huh. So obviously volume, but most importantly, kind of distorted. Just, you know, preference. Reverb had it more wet because anything that has more wet reverb to it, will sound behind anything that has more dry volume and less wet reverb to it. So I'll play that together so you can hear the difference. Huh. Top down the back, Top. six or three on the track, yeah. small town the map, yeah. made beats from the... So without the reverb, it really sounds like it's on the same level, which it really shouldn't be because it's an ad-lib vocal. So you could, you're only supposed to hear that when you're really paying attention to it or at like it shouldn't be a focal point of the song it should be an addition the focal point is the is the main vocals that's what should be the lead so then nothing should conflict with that so that's why i added the more wet reverb to the ad libs right huh. top down the back Six. and then just a stereo enhancer to kind of get it out of the way of the middle and just separate it out um, between the two monitors or two earbuds whatever you're listening on right huh now on the synth, I really didn't do much to it at all. Um, it came in fine, it came in perfect. So, right, huh. top, right, huh. top down the back, six or three on the track, small town the map. So that's how I got that part of the song to sound the way it does now.
All right, on to the chorus. So when I got the chorus, it actually only was this. I used to, I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used to tell you things. Now. But I thought I was really missing a potential focal point of the song without having bass there, so I just plugged in my own 808s and um, just just figured it out. Um, so I'll play that for you guys with the bass, and I'll tell you how I got the bass to sound prominent and the vocals to agree with it. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. So, without any touching of the bass, here's what it sounds like. It sounded pretty good to begin with, but here it is. I used to tell you things. So that'd be good if the bass was a supporting part of the chorus, but I actually wanted the bass in this situation to be the main part. So a lot of mixing is just deciding what instrument is of most importance. And in most of your songs, it'll be vocals, and then whatever is the best part of the song after the vocals. And in this part, I found it to be the bass. So I used um, distor distortion and a multiband compressor. Just compressed the lows and jacked it up to get the bass to be the most important part, and I'll play it with it. I Without it. I used to tell you things. So that's a really important part of the chorus. Um, you just have to find what part is most important and jack it up, really. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used Hold up. I deleted one of the parts I had in there. There it is. I'll put them out. And I also thought I was missing highs in the, in the drop that it could have been there because the hats had the highs before, but then they were taken out. So I had to replace the highs with something or else it would have sounded empty. So I took the same synth and I just pitched it up of, um, an octave. And here's what it sounds like. Go says lately, I put them out like daily. I used to tell you things. So a big difference there, very subtle, but makes a big difference when you hear it without it compared to how you hear it with it. That's how a lot of mixing is. If you do mixing, like for, let's say you're mixing for an hour, it might not even sound like you did anything until you take that break, come back, and you just hear how it sounded before, and it's just a completely different song. So it's always important to take breaks as well. Go says lately, I put them out like daily. I used to tell you things. Go says lately, I put them out like daily. I used to tell you, go says. Go says lately, I put them out like daily. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used to tell you things. Now I'm on to better things. I used. So that's how I got Noah's song to sound clean, crisp, and better. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments. And any requests for videos, any concepts you didn't understand in my video, let me know and I'll be happy to make a, you know, a tutorial on whatever you didn't get. So thank you. Hopefully you learned something and you can put it to practice. Alright, have a good one.